Hey, welcome to AntennaTheory.com. Uh, we're going to be talking about Smith charts here. So here is your standard Smith chart. It's actually a more complicated one known as an emittance chart. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But basically, this looks like a complicated monstrosity of a plot, uh, but it's actually very useful uh, in antenna theory. Basically, we're able to look at a plot of an antenna's impedance versus frequen frequency and visualize how we would uh, perform the impedance matching just by looking at it. Um, and it enables us, these are, Smith charts are used in network analyzers to show the frequency response of an antenna in a vector form as opposed to scalar measurements which don't give us as much information. So these were originally developed by a guy named Smith back in the 30s as a tool for simplifying uh, transmission line calculations and they're not used for that anymore because you know, computers make that simple but they're still extremely useful in antenna theory for impedance matching and just understanding what's going on with an antenna. So what exactly is this thing? So what we're looking at a Smith chart is basically a polar plot of the reflection coefficient. So what does that mean? So imagine you have some source here connected to an antenna via transmission line with characteristic impedance Z0. Um, the reflection coefficient is how much power is reflected at the antenna at the point where the transmission line is connected. So that's a function of the impedance of the transmission line and your antenna's impedance. So it's calculated via this equation, very simple equation. Z0 is typically real, often it's just 50 ohms for standard coaxial cables. Um, and ZA is the antenna pins, which is a complex number. So in general, uh, your reflection coefficient is going to be a complex number as well. So let's start by breaking down the Smith chart. So you see the complicated Smith chart in black behind it, but just ignore all that for a second, and let's just look at it very simply. So here, imagine you're in the complex plane, and we're plotting the reflection coefficient gamma. So gamma, the magnitude has to be less than or equal to 1, right? You can only reflect 100% of the power. You can't have more power come back than you sent for, you know, regular antennas, passive loads, whatever. So this magnitude of gamma equals 1 is this uh, outer circle here. And this forms the boundary of the Smith chart. So here we have the real part of gamma axis and the imaginary part of gamma axis. So all the Smith chart does, every point on the Smith chart is just the polar representation of the reflection coefficient. So here is the center of the Smith chart. All power, uh, so in this region the magnitude of gamma is zero in which case there's no power reflected and the antenna is perfectly matched to the transmission line um, so all the power is delivered. This outer ring, gamma is 1, so all power is reflected. And then any point in there, like for instance this point right here, we can say like gamma has a magnitude of let's say 0.5 with an angle of 45 degrees, it would be e to the i uh, pi over 4. So that is what gamma is corresponding to a point on the Smith chart right there. And so since like VSWR is just a function of the magnitude of gamma or also S11 if you want to look at it that way, constant circles, imagine this is a <laughs> circle centered at here, these would all be constant VSWR circles. So any point here would have a constant VSWR. Okay, so so let's look at this Smith chart here. So where does all these crazy lines come from? So we know the reflection, co this is just, any point on here is the reflection coefficient. Um, you know, real part, imaginary part. So since we know that, you know, gamma is a function of, uh, the antenna impedance and the characteristic impedance. What are we, uh, suppose we're interested in real part of the antenna impedance equals 1. 
So, for instance, antenna impedance equals 1 plus I10 or plus I20 or plus I0. What would the set of all points be where the real part of the antenna impedance is 1? Well, it turns out if you go through the math on that, you end up with this circle right here. Now, what if you wanted to know, so let's just real part impedance equals 1. And then each one of these locations is, you know, a different value of the imaginary part. So, for instance, this part would be 1 plus I1. And down here would be 1 minus I1. Here's the center of the Smith chart where the impedance is 1. So, what about real part of the impedance equals 2? Well, that's this circle right here. So, first off, we see there's all these circles on the Smith chart. These are constant resistance circles. So, each one of these corresponds to a point or the set of all values where the real part of the antenna impedance is real, or constant. So that's where a lot of these lines come from. Now let's say we were interested in where is the imaginary part constant. So for instance, the set of all values where you're like 0 plus I1, or 10 plus I1, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Well that value is these curves here. So this is imaginary part ZA equals plus 1. Now what about minus 1? So then we have this curve. This is the set of all values where imaginary part of ZA equals minus 1. So all of these curves on here just correspond to simple uh, expression where the real part or the imaginary part of the impedance uh, is constant. So that's where all these curves come from. Now it might not seem like that is very helpful, but it turns out that's extremely useful uh, for impedance matching and visualizing what's going on. So for antennas, let's say you plot the antenna impedance that you'd see on a network analyzer from 700 megahertz to like 2 gigahertz. So here you see frequency increases this way and from looking at this we know there's a resonance so here's the center of the Smith chart. We have a couple resonances, one here and one here. So let's say this is 850 and this is 1.6 gigahertz. So by looking at this we can kind of see how the antenna is performing over frequency. And remember, the farther the antenna impedance uh, is from the center of the Smith chart, the more power is reflected. So impedance matching on the Smith chart is how do we move you know, the impedance of the antenna closer to the Smith chart. So looking at this on a network analyzer, we can see where the resonances are. And also, the Smith chart just makes it very easy to visualize impedance matching. So, it would actually take a very long time to explain all that. So, if you go to antennatheory.com, go down to Smith Charts and Impedance Matching, where I have this whole tutorial on this, where introduction to Smith Charts, I explain constant resistance circles and impedance transformation, and then get into impedance matching with series components, transmission lines, parallel components, and you can really understand where everything comes from. So if you want to see more or understand like the Smith chart and how uh, impedance matching is done, just go through this. I hope it's uh, fairly straightforward. But that is the uh, introduction to Smith charge.